Hello, New York. You came from Seattle or Vancouver? Came from Seattle. From Seattle, very good. I brought the rain with you. I hope that's okay. Um, my name is Eric Weaver. I'm with a company called Ants Eye View, as in looking at customers through the eyes of an ant. And I'd like to talk to you today about the state of now what? What is the next step in corporate social media? How many people here are marketers or PR folks? Good number of you. This is for you, all right? Uh, let's see where my remote is here. So, um, oh, we advanced too far. So the typical corporate social media journey has been something like this. If you've done corporate social over the last few years, you've realized that you know, first you have to convince management, typically who are baby boomers, to understand the value of social. Marketing takes over, and suddenly we start getting push offers, coupons, codes, uh, promos, press releases pushed out through social channels, sometimes through all of them. Uh, and then we get into the dirty, dirty, dirty business of buying fans through Facebook ads and things like that when the CEO goes, Brand X down the street has 175,000 fans and, and likes on Facebook, and we've only got 75, like it's some kind of basketball game. And uh, so we start reverting to things like that, and maybe you'll spend a buck, maybe four, sometimes I've seen even $18 per like. Ouch. And then we get into, uh, we've moved into tabs and apps, tabs and apps, I get asked about this all the time. And uh, a lot of times it's an, it's an app that no one will download because it's just not that relevant to what the customer wants. And we've got folks who are selling books who say, you need a, an ROI, duh, for social media, and they'll sell you the book. And, and you, of course, yes, we have to justify resource costs. Then what? What happens next? What's the next step in corporate social media? Is it mobile? Mobile is just a tool. What's the next step in corporate social media? There's a bigger opportunity, and that is to align the entire organization, customer care, ops, sourcing, distribution, and marketing and PR around social. And this shows an example. I don't know why my slides are advancing by themselves. Stop that. Um, but you can see there's opportunity to inject the customer's preferences, voice, feedback, uh, co-creation into all sorts of different things along the value chain. Why are my slides moving forward? So the opportunity here, thanks, Jeff, <laughs> is to uh, align, the, uh, get customer alignment, which means you're going to market faster. Um, the products that you're putting out, the services that you're putting out are what people want and what they will choose to retail. There's reduced financial risk to the company, right? Uh, employees better, uh, are better able to anticipate needs, um, and collaboration happens wherever, whenever. So this requires thinking cross-functionally, requires thinking outside of your solo or your silo. I really don't like that. Um, I'm going to stand here, sorry. So that to me is the next challenge, is to align all these different departments and to get them talking to each other, sharing data, and, and using that social data to better engage the customer. Now, let's assume that we get there, right? Let's assume that we're able to do that. Once we're aligned, how do you foster customer engagement? Uh, there's a, a, you know, we, we pride ourselves on being these rational people who make thoughtful decisions and, and we act based on them. Uh, we're very superior in our sentience and, and we generally feel that we're very, very, very rational. But the reality is that we're not. Daniel Kahneman, Nobel Prize laureate, for, did some work on emotional versus rational decision making. Uh, he found that typically we truly believe that we think something and then we do it and then we feel something about it. But in reality, we feel something and then we act, and then we post-rationalize it. Like, I, I didn't get the job, but that's okay, because I didn't want it anyways. So, and that is because we are, we think with an emotional brain. Kahneman found that 95% of our thought process happens in the emotional brain. And it's because we're primates, we're crazy monkey people. <laughs> we, you know, we, we uh, it's fight or flight. It, 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 we can process, parallel process, emotional thinking. But rational thinking is a whole different story. Rational thinking takes more energy, more jewels, it takes more time, and we, you know, if X is true, then Y, if Y is true, then Z. And we live in a very time-starved world. We're, we're so time-starved. When the dude in the next stall at the airport bathroom is taking phone calls, customer calls, we gotta be time-starved. If, if he's willing to share that much information with a prospect, wow. So, um, you know, we need to do a better job as marketers of convincing people to take the time to rationally think through a decision. That's hard when we're time-starved. So, what approach will address time starvation? Emotionally relevant content that talks to the emotional brain and inspires social interaction. Uh, my former agency was DDB, and there we had a product for NOR called Sidekicks. It was a uh, new 25% less sodium dish uh, in, in a packaged rice, packaged rice, packaged potatoes, pretty boring. And our challenge was to 
to basically promote it and sell it in the marketplace. So we created a, a, a hook for the emotional brain that integrates, integrated, uh, integrates engagement efforts with the customer. And let's take a look at how that went. There's a, can you guys uh, cue the lights? Sidekicks now have 25% less sodium than before. Not everyone's happy about it. I bet when you woke up this morning, you weren't expecting to hear Michael Bolton, were you? <laughs> so we, we, you know, we promoted the, the, the product and Salty, his little life, away from the dinner table in print and point of sale. And we also did integrated social media, where we, uh, we engaged the customer in the voice of Salty, uh, and, and asked questions, did contests, took Salty and Pep into various strange spots, and had him uh, engage with customers uh, in the voice of the customer. We also created video content to tell the story on YouTube after the commercial, the broadcast commercial had passed, so we could continue the story of Salty's life away from the dinner table. And these girls were probably expecting some shirtless dude with a chin strap and a backwards baseball hat, and instead they find on chat roulette, there's a salt and pepper shaker. We got a lot of press about this. We've got, uh, you know, com arts and, and, and a lot of uh, traditional press blogger pickup, including this one, where a woman said, someone mentioned his video in a tweet and I got hooked. I must have watched the video 10 times. I tweeted him at Salty's Life and he wrote back with a link to it as dating adventures. And here, let's take a look at how that went. Can we dim the lights, please? Hello? Hello? Hello, hello. I, I can't see you. Is anyone there? Hello. 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 Poor Salty, he cannot get a break. No mention, no verbal mention of the product. So, so we had a huge response. We had uh, people submit photos to our photo contests. We had people take, uh, buy the shakers and, and take pictures of uh, videos of them with their kids, some getting thousands of views. They did culinary photo shoots with the salt and pepper shaker. And someone even took the time to do pasta art. Think about that, pasta art for a brand avatar. I mean, that's crazy. So, did it work? In the first 25 days, we had 6,000 Facebook fans. We had 375,000 video impressions at a total cost of zero uh, media. We, had, we sold out of the salt and pepper shakers, had the highest website traffic ever. Sales rose by 24% in a, rep a recession. And most importantly, Sidekick surpassed Uncle Ben's as the number one brand in the category. <laughs> Customers want a brand that will engage with them and talk back to them where they are, where they prefer to be, and why is, has someone got a remote? Someone's playing with me here. So uh, Starbucks.com recently released uh, stats that uh, they were getting about 1.8 million uniques per month on their Starbucks.com site. The Facebook fan page got 19 million. Coca-Cola.com got 270,000 uniques on their .com site. They got 22 million on their fan page. People don't want to leave their friends on the emotional, you know, charge they get from connecting with their friends. They'd rather engage with you in these channels. And they also purchase more from you if you are engaging them. So are you more likely to buy since becoming a fan or a follower? Facebook, yes, 51% are more likely to buy. 67 on Twitter, are you more likely to recommend? Yes and yes. So choice impacts, uh, or uh, engagement impacts choice and preference and transactions. So the next step in social is not about new tools, it's not about reach and frequency and all that same crap that we've been brought up to do. It's about aligning the entire organization around the customer preference and engaging with them. Thank you so much.